right now. Breathe in with me, in through the nose, out through the nose. The biggest thing about D Free from the beginning is changing your mindset. Welcome to the D Free Financial Freedom Movement. In 2005, I started a little study group, basically explaining to people how I personally went from running from bill collectors to having a great credit score and developing wealth myself. We, we called the curriculum that I was teaching D-Free. And a few years later, I wrote a book, we have a workbook, and so now the D-Free Financial Freedom Movement consists of curriculum that's user-friendly, it's culturally relevant and very affordable. It's also a movement because thousands, literally thousands of churches and community organizations around the country have been using all of our content. And then it's a brand. We found that using a term that we really made up, D-free, it was easier for people to digest and to use than to have people say, I'm drowning in debt, or I'm broken, don't know what to do. So we launched this movement, this campaign. We called it D-Free. The D stands for getting out of debt, avoiding delinquencies, that's paying bills late and late fees, and living in deficit state, meaning that I'm spending more than I make. So that's the freedom, D-Free, freedom from debt delinquencies and deficits which allows us to become free to make deposits, that's, that's D, deposits in, in our own bank accounts. Many of us couldn't handle an emergency of $400 without having to borrow money. So we want to have deposits in our own bank accounts, have our names on deeds. When I bought my first house, I was blessed to see my name on a deed, and so we promote ownership, and then dividends. Dividends are what you earn from investments. I, today, get more money from one of my investments through dividends than I made in my salary on my first job. So D3 is freedom from, freedom to, and the goal is to help close the wealth gap one family at a time. Most of us aren't in the top 3% of the income earners or the net worth owners in this country. There's a big gap between normal people and super rich people. And we believe that the average person, if educated and informed and connected to the right resources, can really do much, much better than we're doing now. And I believe that because of my own story. So D3 includes content that literally tells my story. I talk about being addicted to buying neckties when I really couldn't afford all of the neckties that I bought. I talk about getting my car washed by somebody else and having to pay them for it, even though the water at my house is just as wet as the water at the car wash. So D3 seeks to serve individuals, primarily through organizations, and so we train people to teach people how to rise above the current financial level that they're on and really live a life that's stress-free and financially rewarding. We, we sponsor conferences. We have content just like this online. We have a website, dfree.com. We have partners like Prudential that support us in our efforts. And probably our biggest event that we sponsor is called FinFest. We've done FinFest online. We've had FinFest in person. And then we've had FinFest that was a hybrid, both in line, online, and in person. And today, you are joining us for our online version of FinFest, and the goal is to connect real people to real resources in real time. In other words, this is not just for you to watch, but this is for you to not only learn information, but be motivated to take action on that information, and then allow us to connect you with people who, without charging you any money, can help you develop a strategy for using all of the motivation and all of the information that you develop. So thank you for joining me during this time. You can click like, you can share this with your friends, you can subscribe to this channel because this is just one of many 
of our current online FinFest offerings that you'll have access to today. Now, our first presentation for this year's FinFest is someone that I've known all of his life. He's someone who thinks like me, looks like me, talks like me. In fact, he even has my name. And we invited him this year to present at FinFest because, first of all, in our D-Free curriculum and our program, we encourage people to spend seven minutes a day looking at or thinking about focusing on their finances. I've actually written books called Meditations for Financial Freedom to help people spend seven minutes reflecting on some aspect of their finances. Then our presenter comes along and says, listen, not only can you read the book, but there are methods of using seven, 10, 15 minutes where you actually can change the way you think and change the way you breathe such that it really helps you with your finances. I had never thought about that before. I know about thinking about finance. I've known a lot about studying finances, but it never occurred to me that there was a relationship between the way I breathe and the way I function financially. So fasten your seatbelts, share with your friends, get out a pen to take notes, and welcome to FinFest, Martin Sores, who will present to you Mind Over Money. Before I start, I need you to try to do this. If you can do this, if you're able, if you're willing and able. You don't have to talk while I'm talking, so this should be a little bit easier. Just keep your mouth closed right now. Breathe in with me, in through the nose, out through the nose. In through the nose, out through the nose. I want you to try to keep that going at your own pace, but also try to extend the exhale. However long you usually exhale, you get to that point, just try to extend it by like three or four more seconds. Out through the nose. Focus on the cold air coming in the nose and the warm air coming out of the nose. Just try to keep that up at your own pace while I share this with you. A few years ago, I started a consistent meditation practice, which, which is a little different for me, probably a little different for most of us. When you start to meditate consistently, um, things reveal themselves to you. You start to remember things that you don't want to remember. Um, you realize things about yourself. It's, it's really kind of uncomfortable at first. One of the things I realized that was revealed to me is that one of my biggest problems ever since I was a kid is that I desperately, I would do anything. I desperately, more than anything, I really, really wanted superpowers. And I'm not talking about like, oh, I want, no, no, I'm talking like I would sit in my room and be like, if I could just, like, I, I grew up watching X, any Marvel fans, any Marvel people, because some of these references, all right. Um, I'm an, I grew up watching X-Men, Iron Man, Spider-Man, right? But I'm not, I'm, so I, I would, you know, Magneto, like, I would, if, you know, you're tired in your bed sitting there, I'm like, man, I wonder if I could, if I just, if I focus hard enough, can I get that thing to just, I don't feel like going over there. Can, could I, you know, when you watch and you're like, is it moving? Is it, is it? <laughs> Nothing's happening. As you get older, you realize more things about the world, what's real, what's not, what you're capable of, uh, you know, what's on TV and what's in real life. Like you just start to realize what's, what's actually real. You know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna fly up in the sky. If, I'll find, if anyone's gonna get it, I'm gonna get it, because I, re I really want it. But, but those, aren't, those aren't real superpowers. That's what they create for movies. So as you get older and as you get more interested in breathing as I did, as I started meditating, what I realized was like, yo, it's just, I, I kept going to these places and having these experiences and things are revealed to me and I'm getting a little more calm. I had a temper problem as a kid and I would just do things. I would just do things, you know? 
And so I find myself changing a little bit, just becoming more me. Like nothing really crazy is happening. I'm just, I'm just settling in. I'm just able to just relax finally and breathe. The more interested I got in the experiences I had, the more I realized, well, it's just the breathing. My, my wonderful teacher who taught me, she would tell me to breathe a certain way, you know, for this amount of time and through the nose, out through the nose. I'm like, well, it's just breathing. It's just, it's just breathing. How is breathing doing this to me? So I got more interested. I started reading books. <laughs> I used to hate reading. I don't, I don't like reading. I don't like science. You know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I'm not, you know, I don't have any interest in any of that stuff at all. I got bad grades in school and science. It's like, it's not this, I'm a basketball person. That's my background. I speak pick and roll and James Harden. And you know, like I'm a, that's, I do this with basketball players because I, I realized this could help basketball players. Now people are asking me to speak to, to y'all about this stuff. Um, so the more I read about breath, the more I started to realize, oh, perfect. The more I started to realize the number one thing, the main thing I realized that I learned, this isn't from me. I read this from people way smarter than me. We're supposed to breathe through the nose. The nose is designed for breathing. The mouth is designed for eating and drinking and speaking. The nose. So I start to learn more things about like breathing, the function of it and things like that. I'm interested because of what meditation is doing for me. And I'm like, well, it's just breathing. Let me read some more stuff about breathing. James Nestor has a book. It's my favorite breathing book. It's called Breath. <laughs> Breath. <laughs> you know, the new science of a lost art. The new science of a lost art. Breathing isn't new. Did you have to wake up and turn on your breathing, your breathing thing this morning? No, it's an involuntary function. All of us in here are breathing right now. The new science of a lost art? This isn't new. What's new about it? A lost art? <laughs> what? Art? It's breathing. So I read the book a few times. One thing he says in this book is that when you breathe in through the nose, you actually inhale more molecules than there are grains of sand in all the beaches in the world. When you inhale through the nose, you actually take in more molecules. I sound really smart right now, right? You take in more molecules than all the grains of sand in all the beaches in the world. Now, what are, what's even going on? <laughs> when you breathe through the nose, your body's able to take in 18% more oxygen. Oxygen seems good. Oxygen, we need oxygen, I'm pretty sure. I'm a basketball person, I don't know. Oxygen seems good. Hydrogen, oxygen, you know, water seems good. Like we need stuff like that. Oxygen, 18% more oxygen just by breathing through the nose. So for kids, if you get a 70 on a test versus you got an 88 on a test, two, two different tests, right? Two different feelings, 70 versus 88, for basketball people, anyone in the room, if you, if you know a free throw shooter is a 65% free throw shooter versus an 83% free throw shooter, those are two different free throw shooters entirely. 18% is what I'm talking about. So when you teach someone like me who wants superpowers, who wants to learn how to heal my body like Wolverine, and, and do think, but, but what, what you learn in real life, superpowers aren't, it's not that. I used to watch my dad run around the church in this big red robe. Well, he only ran around because one time he was chasing my brother. It's not like he was just running around. But he had this big red robe, and when he would move around, the robe would fly, and I, and I would think he was a superhero, like Superman, you know? He would put on the robe, and it would... What I came to realize and understand about real life is that a single mom making it every day, that's a real, that's real life superpowers. I don't need y'all to clap. I'm, I'm, 
That's, that's, no, but that's, that's real. That's what I'm talking about. I've also read about people, Katarina Scroth and George Catlin and John Dillard and these people, there are cases, real life cases in the world of people who have healed dementia, asthma, anxiety, uh, all kinds of disorders and, and all kinds of things just by breathing. So in summary, the only reason I'm up here, the only reason I'm qualified to talk about this in this setting where we're talking about money is because we're talking about mind over money. You can learn as much as you want, you can be as motivated as you want, but we've all got stress caused by money or relationships or family or whatever, we've all got it. If, we could, if all we need is the breath, to center ourselves, and, and people always say, yeah, you know, people come up to me, yeah, I know about the breathe, I know about the breathe, yeah. and I'm like, I'm like, you don't meditate. I know you don't meditate. What, what, what? We don't do this stuff. You know, I told you, I do this with basketball players, so you can imagine my struggle. It's very different for them, but guess what? Once they try it, once they try, I got a kid around the corner at NJIT, a freshman on the team, he might be here this afternoon. He'll tell you all about it. Once they try it, my work, my work is done. It's foolproof, and it's ours. I don't, got, I don't have to pay anybody. I don't have to subscribe to nothing. <laughs> it's mine, my own breath. So we talk about mind over money. The biggest thing about D-Free from the beginning is changing your mindset. I've always wanted to know how to change my mindset, how to become supernatural, how to get superpowers. What does that look like in the real world? I found it. To find out what I actually am, you'd have to find me on Instagram. But for now, I'm Martin Sores. I appreciate you for listening. Enjoy the day. Keep breathing through the nose. Much love. Thank you, Martin, for that marvelous introduction to the connection that we should make between our breathing and our mental state and our finances and our decision-making process. I've always used that expression almost all of my life, take a deep breath. And I often use it within the context of inviting people to pause before they speak or think before they act. But I was really never giving someone explicit instructions to pause, breathe from their nose, hold it in, breathe it out slowly. It was more of a figure of speech. But now I realize that a figure of speech, when put into act activation, it actually can contribute to the decision-making process that affects our financial wellness. So thanks to Martin, and I hope you wrote down some of these suggestions. I'm hoping that you will practice and try and get ready because we're going to build out an entire mindfulness segment of the D-Free content to ensure that we're being holistic in our approach to financial wellness. So not only do I want you to like and to share and to subscribe to this station because we've got so much more content. But I also want you to stay tuned and click next because there is a next. This is an entire series. FinFest has a plethora of information through dynamic speakers and I'd hate for you to stop right here. So click next, get ready and share with your friends that FinFest is sharing resources that help real people in real time with real solutions.